influencer marketing has grown exponentially over the past few years, but many brands are still unsure of its role within the wider marketing ecosystem. So today I'm taking you guys through to the Go Agency's Raise on Social, the next era of influencer marketing event. Let's go. Hugh, what are we doing here today? Yeah, so we are at the next era of marketing, our sister agency's GOAT panel event this morning. And it's an opportunity for brands, obviously agency team members, to get together under one roof with some interesting, forward-thinking panel talks and discussions, hopefully. Kind of shake people up a bit, which should be a lot of fun. I would start by thanking everyone for being here. Incredibly, we had a massive waiting list of people who couldn't get in. I mean, it was massively oversubscribed. And I know you're all very busy people and it's quite early, so um, we appreciate it. I'm really excited to be moderating the brand panel. Essentially, we're going to be kind of discussing how brands look at influencer, how we can drive greater efficiencies, and how we can really start to integrate it in our campaigns to kind of drive that marketing effectiveness. And we've got some great examples. Hi everyone, I'm Dom, Global Client Director at Purple Goat. Ultimately, what we do is to try and create more representation in society and do that in a fun, creative and progressive way at all times. We know that 24% of the population in the UK are disabled, but yet only 0.9% TV ads feature disabled people. Of that, only 14% is normalized representation. And what we mean by that is we see this kind of tragedy or this triumph over adversity, everyone wants to be a Paralympian. We very rarely see the middle, the, the reality of people that are just people that happen to be disabled, intersectional, and disability is a part of their, their life, just like having brown hair might be part of their life. The reality is brands have been scared to engage in those conversations and not knowing how. And the power of influencer is that we're able to tell those really nuanced stories from the horse's mouth, as it were, and let individuals, let creators, actually talk to their own lived experiences, talk to a brief in a way that feels comfortable for them. And in doing that, we see incredible results. And that is a kind of authenticity and a, a route to inclusion that brands really, really struggle to get doing anything else. And so ultimately, uh, at PG, we're there to handhold brands through that experience, but then also the complementary bits that go outside of that to make sure that what we're doing is always authentic and inclusive from the ground up. So we set out kind of the ambition to make Strongbow cool again, um, and really to kind of the ambition was making Strongbow the most inclusive cider within the market. And that wasn't gonna happen overnight, and that kind of started from everything through from our packaging, from our communications, how, what did we say to consumers, um, but also how did we show up? So we hadn't previously really, we we hadn't shown anybody from the disabled community within our advertising and actually those kind of things really sh kind of shocked us when we started thinking about how could we be a cider for everyone but we've never never shown somebody from the disabled community or you know how could we be enjoyed by everyone but actually when we play out our TV ads people that are hard of hearing um, or maybe have a like visual impairment can't actually see or enjoy our ads you know we ended up playing out four ads with Purple Goat as well which meant you know we have a signed version we have an audio version of our advert so that you may not see it if you don't click the red button or you don't view your kind of content in a different way. Um, but actually for those that can and need to, they actually suddenly are able to enjoy the content in a way they haven't been able to before. And then we started to kind of really look at other opportunities. So as part of this ambition, you know, how could we show up with underrepresented communities in a really authentic and natural way? This, this couldn't happen overnight. I'm going to be honest that uh, my favourite part of working with Strongbow was the, the whole thing, is that allowed? Um, it's just the attitude of the brand and essentially their trust in us to be able to hold their hand in an authentic way through the work that we're doing. And actually, as Dom said, like this was all about holding my hand and the team's hand and actually uh, us getting comfortable with asking the questions, are we doing this right? Or, you know, how, how should we be showing up? We don't know the answers. I don't know how it feels to be somebody that's within the disabled community. I don't know how it feels to be somebody in the LGBTQ plus community when we're activating at Pride. So speaking to those communities and understanding what they want from brands was really, really important. But also kind of being able to, to ask the uncomfortable questions, which Dom and the team definitely helped us feel more comfortable as we kind of went through the process, I would say. 
you know, what, are we, what, are, what do we need to be doing? And then we put together, you know, essentially an inclusive media plan of sorts that touched different areas of what we could do together. But I think for me, the highlight was definitely Brighton Pride. And actually what we did was partner with Hunsnet, um, which has essentially allowed us to create an authentic partnership and show up with content that wasn't talking about the Strongo brand. It was bringing epic content to consumers within that, that space. A highlight for me, we were standing at the top of the stage and, and watching people kind of learning how to say Strongbow um, in sign language, something we would never have considered. Um, but also just watching people kind of enjoy the brand and the experience that we brought to, to the community. And Whether you're disabled or not, it's about creating something that's a better experience for absolutely everybody. Hi Grace, how did it go? Yeah, that's good. It was really nice to be back on stage with Dom um, and talk about all of the work that we've done over the last 18 months but also actually to reflect on some of the things that we still need to do as we go ahead into 2020. You said, what would you say were the best practices for other brands to do so they want to be truly inclusive and representative of their, their customers and their audience? Yeah, so we spoke about kind of, I spoke about three things. So one is uh, getting comfortable with the uncomfortable. So to ask the questions, both of ourselves, our internal organization, but also of our agencies. So to ask you, how we go, what are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? What more could we do? Um, the second one was that it starts internally, so you really need to bring the organisation into the strategy and make sure everybody firmly believes in it and they're aligned, so that actually we all have one common goal moving forward and how we show up and activate. Um, and the third one was around just being nationally representative, so we need to ensure that our consumers are shown within our brand. So actually just making sure that, for example, with the disabled community, how do we make sure that uh, within the influencer campaigns that we have, 24% of our influencers, or roughly around that, are from the disabled community and bring that in authentically and naturally within the content that we share. Hi Dom, um, how did you find the event? I absolutely loved it. I think that the GO team put on genuinely like a brilliant, brilliant event. What I found really fascinating, every session there was a, a level of kind of conversation that maybe was a step or two up from just like explaining what influence marketing is and talking in the sort of really general terms because of who was in the audience, which was brands, agencies, teams. Like it was people actually living and breathing the industry. So the conversations could be that level. Like genuinely, I think everyone left there thinking, wow, I've learned some stuff, but also had a great time. You sort of almost got people excited for what is to come in the coming years. And ultimately, that's exactly what it was trying to do next year with influencer marketing. But I think everyone left there feeling exactly that excited for the future of what, what we can do and what's possible.